Howdy, uh, MC here from Alger Bikes and the JJF Bike Room, and this is Cycling 101. Right now we're talking about the ever popular and dreaded flat tire. We're going to cover how to deal with one, what to carry, etc, etc. We're going to assume that you're having this flat tire alongside the road. Okay, full disclosure department. The odds of you having that flat tire within walking distance of a $300 repair stand are, let's face it, fairly slim. But I only need the stand to get the bike off the ground. So if you're riding with a buddy, he or she can take care of that for you. If you are solo, you can hang the bike by the nose of the saddle under a tr off a tree branch, uh, off a fence post, a sign post, or failing all of that, do the thing we did when we were kids, turn the bike upside down and set it on the seat and the handlebars, remembering that you might have your iPhone or GPS device here on the handlebars, so get that out of the way before you go crushing it into the sand by the side of the road, all right? We're gonna change the back tire because, well, Murphy's Law states that's the one that you'll have the most trouble with because it's the scary one. We're gonna get rid of the scary part. We're gonna show you how to do it. It's a piece of cake. This is pro tip number one. Always shift your bike into its highest, hardest pedal gear anytime you want to remove the rear wheel for any reason. Two reasons for that. One, when you shift your bike into the highest gear, the derailleur, the mechanism that moves the chain up and down the gear set, moves physically outward as far as it will go, making it as close to being out of your way as it's going to get. Two, since when we put this all back together, we need to put the chain on the right gear. If you know that it came off the smallest gear, you know where to put it. All right? This particular bike has a through axle, uh, which is a, a relatively new development that is similar to a quick release rear wheel, but a little bit different. Um, and we're going to just take the rear wheel off now. In the case of a through axle, you simply unwind it until it's loose. Pull the entire axle out, hence the name through axle. And the rear wheel is ready to come out. Now here is pro tip number two. We're going to use the derailleur spring. Most folks don't realize that these guys are spring loaded like this. To pull the spring out of the way and give the chain and wheel a clear path to drop out. I haven't even touched the chain. Um, you don't need to get filthy from fingers to elbows getting the rear wheel out no matter how dirty your chain is. And that's the topic for yet another video. All right, here's the thing. There's a bunch of different kinds of brakes and there's a bunch of different ways that wheels go on bikes. We can't show you all of them, but I'm gonna show you one other very common example. This is a so-called linear or V-brake, common on hybrids and earlier mountain bikes. And it disconnects like so. Squeeze it against the rim, release the noodle, this 90 degree bend piece in my right hand, and the brake pops right open. Once you have the brake open, you open the quick release. And on the front wheel, you've got to unwind it about six turns. The wheel will come right out. All right, so you're probably also not going to have a great handy work surface here, uh, but I'm cheating just a little bit. To get the tire off of the rim, nowadays especially, with some of the new, very tight-fitting tires and rims out there. Go all the way around and push the tire away from the rim. You'll hear that snap. That means you've broken the bead, and it's not gonna fight you so much as far as getting the tire away from the rim. Take the time to go all the way around on both sides. Then, starting across from the valve, take one of the tire levers that you have in your kit, which they have a spoon on the end of them. You want to use it with a spoon up like that. Go inside here and grab a hold of the bead, which is the wire or Kevlar strands at the edge of the tire. Pry that away. Use the hook on the end of the tire lever to free up this hand. Go to tire lever number two. Go down a couple spokes. Repeat the process. Tire levers quite often come in sets of three. You will hardly ever need three, but two is handy. Um, once you get the bead broken away from the tire enough, it will become possible for you to simply slide the tire lever around 
and pulling the bead away from the rim all the way around. All right. So here's the first of our sort of crossroads, so to speak. It is completely possible here to get this tube out while leaving the tire on the rim. If you are short on time, and more importantly, are quite sure why you had the flat, like the uh, thumbtack is still sticking in the tire, this can be a little bit of a tire saver, a time saver, excuse me. If on the other hand you're not sure why you had a flat, it is easier to do some of the triage with the tire off the rim. So in that case, you'd get the tube out of the way, go back around and with your fingers simply push the tire off the rim. At this point, your task is to figure out why you had a flat tire. Um, so you put a little bit of air in the old tube, either using your mini pump or your CO2 device. And you're going to find one of three punctures. Puncture number one, the obvious one on the outside of the tube. That would indicate that you ran over something. That something may still be in your tire, and this is critical. You need to get that out of there before you put the new tube in. So what I'm doing here is running my fingers along the inside of the tire while visually inspecting the outside of the tire looking for the offending piece of glass, thumbtack, staple, sharp little rock, wire from a steel belted radial, whatever it is that caused my puncture and messed up my ride. Um, so yes, I am hoping that something sharp is protruding through the tire and it's going to prick me on the end of the finger. Uh, that's one reason why I'm wearing gloves. Um, there's the occasional mystery flat where you simply won't find anything, but look hard and make sure that you've examined this tire, possibly to the point even of turning it inside out. And find the offender if it's there. Puncture number two would be on the inside of the tube. You can tell the inside by where the valve is. Um, a puncture along the inside of the tube indicates that your rim tape, in this case this sort of pale yellow stuff, that is there to protect the tube from the fact that every rim is full of holes and every one of those holes has a sharp edge on the end of it that can easily cut a tube at high pressure. If the rim tape is shifted to one side or develops some cracks or is in some way allowing the sharp edges of all these holes, you can see the impressions that these holes are making in the tape. Plus there's the valve hole itself, which has a sharp edge, and across from the valve, there's the seam where the rim was turned in from a straight piece of aluminum into a circle. And there's a, quite often a sharp edge on the seam as well. So the rim tape's job is to protect the tube from any of these sharp edges, any, which, any one of which is more than adequate to cut a hole in your tube. That's one reason why I keep some duct tape on one of my tire levers, in case I need to patch my rim tape. Again, find it and fix it. Puncture number three is called a snake bite or a pinch flat. It looks like a snake bit your tire. Uh, two tiny holes side by side. A snake bite is a result of hitting something hard, the edge of a pothole, one of those uh, abrupt transitions from the paved bike path to the wooden bridge, um, railroad tracks at speed, uh, combined with a little bit less air pressure perhaps than you should be running is a great way to get a pinch flat. The good news about when you find a pinch flat is you don't need to search your tire or your rim. There's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. Uh, it's more of a behavioral modification you, can, you should consider. Um, so, triage is a big deal. No sense using your only spare tube and what little time you have left before it starts to rain uh, just to put a new tube in and get another flat, right? Okay, so that's a big one. So occasionally, while you're searching through the tire for what caused the flat, you find a cut in the tire itself big enough to let daylight through. This isn't going to work. The new tube will simply blow through that cut and blow up in your face. So at this point we need to boot or patch the tire as well. 
This is one of the, this is the other reason that on my tire lever I keep a bit of duct tape. Duct tape will fix that. The other classic repair, it's called a boot, is a dollar bill. Um, or in this case a twenty dollar bill. Uh, a good friend of mine always keeps a twenty dollar bill in his pack for this use because he forgets it's in there and he's super thrilled to find out later that he's got twenty bucks he didn't know he had. Um, a wrapper from an energy bar will work. Um, use your imagination. A potato chip bag from the crap by the side of the road. You said to put something between the tire and the tube before you inflate the tube to patch that up. So based on the evidence of the tube, we've discovered the problem and we've taken care of it. We've gotten the uh, foreign out of our tire. We've gotten our rim tape straightened up. We've made a mental note about that particular pothole in case we had a pinch flat. Put stuff back together. Now when you get your new tube, by the way, you can patch tubes. I recommend patching them at home in front of the television and not by the side of the trail where it's going to rain or your buddies are getting impatient or the black flies are biting or you're running out of daylight. Um, besides, there are punctures that can't be patched. And again, it's a, I, so I think it's much simpler just to put a new tube in than to mess around with a patch by the side of the road. Your new tube, when it comes out of the package, is going to be very thin and very flat because they squeeze all the air out of them at the factory. Uh, if you're using a Presta style where you, where you can unscrew it, you can inflate it just a tiny bit with your mouth and that will make it easier to wrangle back into the tire. Pro tip number three. Always put the valve by the label of the tire. When you're putting the tire, the tube in the tire. There's three reasons for that. The main one is that next time you have a flat, you can use that as a reference point based on where you find the hole in the tube to cut down the amount of tire that you need to inspect looking for a puncture. Reason number two, quite often the tire PSI rating will be near that label as well and that's just convenient when you're pumping your tires up. And reason number three is it looks pro. Um, so we did all of our disassembly across from the valve. So we put things back together starting with the valve. Some tires are directional too. If you look on the side wall of the tire and it has an arrow indicating which way it goes on, uh, that's, that's advice worth following. I don't know that it's going to ruin your day if you ignore it or miss it, but you might as well check it out. Valve goes through the rim. We're going to put one side of the tire's bead on at a time. get one side all the way on. You shouldn't need your tire levers for this procedure at all. That's the goal. No tire levers with reassembly. They're designed for this process, but you still have a better chance of damaging your new tube using the tire levers than if you don't use tire levers. So give it a shot. And there's a moral victory involved. We have one side of the tire on. We come back to the valve. We start popping that second valve on with our thumbs. working our way around. When you get to the last bit, I can guarantee you that it's going to get difficult. I can't tell you how difficult. It depends entirely on the tire and the rim. But at some point, if you no longer have the thumb strength to pop it on, you might try sort of wrapping your entire hand around it and just sort of popping it up and over like so. If for whatever reason you can't get the last little bit, take your tire lever, flip it around the other way, slide it up underneath the rim, underneath the bead, and carefully lever that over like that and get the tire lever out in a hurry. You will probably get away with it. But if you can get the tire on without using any tools, that's better. So if the thumb thing isn't working for you, you might try pulling it from the other side with your fingers. I used to work with a guy back in the day who when confronted with an exceptionally tight bead would take his shoe off, kind of catch that bead on the ball of his foot and lever the wheel down toward the ground that way. Um, in other words, there's more than one way to skin this cat, but you need to get the tire on. 
We need to make sure that the tire and the rim have this connection without any tube in the way. So the first thing you do to make sure that that happens is you take the valve, shove it up inside the tire, and pull it back down. That gives the tire a chance to snap in under that, under that extra plug of rubber that's at the base of the valve. And then we go all the way around. What I want to see here is that yellow rim tape. What I don't want to see here is a little bu bubble or blister of tube getting in the way here and trying to screw everything up. You go all the way around on both sides. It just takes a second. I know you're almost done. I know you're anxious to get back on the road. But if we don't do this and the tube is in the way, when we inflate it, it's going to blow off in our face. So pop that back into place. If it's a Presta valve with a threaded valve, put the nut on simply for the sake of making inflation easier. Now we're ready to inflate the tire. This is a CO2 cartridge and the inflator. Your other option in terms of on the bike inflation is a mini pump. We'll talk about the advantages of either of those in a bit. These are a set of tire levers. The duct tape is on there in case of needing to patch my rim tape or the tire itself. Spare tube, uh, the bag that it all fits in. This is fundamentally what you need with you to change a flat tire. Just this stuff and either this or this, not both. So whether you're using a CO2 inflator or a mini pump, our goal now is to put some air in the tire and give it one last visual check to make sure we're good to go. So we lock the pump on. Put just enough air in the tire that it starts to take shape. So what we're looking for here is any indication that this tire is not seated evenly on the rim. Uh, the most thing you'd want to find and discover here is a spot where it's creeping off the rim. You get a high spot where the tire seems to be pulling away from the rim, uh, not sitting even on the tire on the rim. That would indicate that you have an issue with whether We want nice and even here. We don't want a high spot. We don't want a low spot. If you have a significant high spot, you're probably going to let the air out. Go back and look at that spot on the tire. A low spot will probably pop into shape as you get more air in it. But this is the last check before we top off the tire and put it back on the bike and hit the road. So we're going to top this off with a CO2 cartridge to show you how these things work. The inflators themselves are all different styles. Make sure you know how yours works. This one has a bit of a push button trigger, some are spring loaded, some have a little bit of a little faucet tap handle. You screw the cartridge into the inflator until you feel it puncture the cartridge. Then you apply the inflator to the valve and release the gas. Nothing's going to explode. They will get cold. By the time I'm done with this, this will be covered with frost. And if you're carrying the right size cartridge, these come in different sizes. For your tire, just use all the gas. Just let it go till it quits. At this point, we are ready to put the tire back on the bike. Again, we're going to use the fact that the rear derailleur has a variety of springs in it to our advantage to keep our hands clean and to make this a piece of cake. If you recall, we did this to the derailleur to get the wheel out. To put the wheel back in, one finger here, push the derailleur cage down toward the ground. That gives us a clear shot at putting the chain on the right gear. This bike has disc brakes, so we gotta make sure that the brake thing happens too. The wheel comes straight up into the wheel, into the frame. Through axle back in. Tightened up nice and snug. We're good to go. All right, so reinstalling a front quick release wheel with a rim brake. Wheel goes back up into the fork. At this point, you hold the nut 
still and you tighten the lever about five or six turns. What we're looking for here is that it starts to get tight when it's sticking straight out to the side and it's a bit of an effort to lock into the frame. Squeeze the brake pads against the rim. Reinstall the noodle in the brake carrier. All right, that should do it. Normally at this point I'd be asking if you have any questions and by all means if you do be sure to let us know here at the shop or in the bike room. Um, otherwise we'll see you out there.